Hey folks, welcome back to Affiliate Retirement. So I appreciate all you who've been following along on this and leaving the positive comments about my story. I appreciate that a lot. Um, this kind of content doesn't get a ton of views. Not that any of my stuff does, honestly. But I appreciate you following along and commenting. Uh, that encourages a guy to keep going. We're in the same location, but because of the remodel, Mrs. Failure's got some of her plants here joining me today. Anyway, uh, one thing I wanted to cover first that I realized after I filmed the last episode and posted it to YouTube that I completely spaced off on. Back in 2013, when I was still farming, uh, right about the time, I, a little bit before I lost the lease on the first ranch, uh, my sister and I started our nut company. And so we are walnut brokers, essentially. That's the simplest way to put it. Um, there's a video on that um, about my nut sack that people don't watch because of the name about my nut sack. But if you want to know more about the walnut company, just go back about a year and look for the video on my nut sack. And just to elaborate on that slightly, if you haven't seen it already, Mrs. Failure keeps my nut sack nailed to the wall of the house. So there's that. Anyway, enough about that. We're here for, I don't know if this will be the final episode, but it's going to be pretty close. Might be. Um, buckle up because it's about to get real. This is how failure came about actually retiring. I'm not going to give you all the information, but I'm going to try to share with you as much as I can. Um, my own kids didn't know most of this information. Maybe still don't know some of it. Uh, anyway, we didn't even tell the kids we did this until a little over a year ago. Anyway, so we, we put the ranch up for sale. The 100 acres we were farming. We owned it for three years and three months. And I decided we were literally one bad crop away from losing it all. We'd been watching Dave Ramsey for a little bit. We were right at a million dollars in debt. And the whole thing was starting to seem like a house of cards to me. The income taxes were going up rapidly. Uh, just because the dollars we were turning in order to support the mortgage payment on that ranch primarily. So anyway, we put it up for sale. I was pretty sure the guy that bought the ranch that I had been leasing previously next door would be very interested in that. So I just casually told the ranch foreman that information one day that we were going to sell. And, uh, and the owner of that ranch was calling me or having his people reach out to me like the next morning. So it took about, I don't know, less than a week to hammer out a deal with him. So we sold that hundred acres for not quite, but almost four and a half times what we had paid for it three years earlier. So this is a perfect textbook example of how you don't make money great another flying beast you don't make money when you sell you make money when you buy and that's hard to wrap your mind around sometimes but the bottom line is we bought that ranch right like i knew it was offered to me at way below market value i knew certain circumstances the value of crops in particular the value of walnuts at that time uh, and the the guy who bought it from us being a walnut farmer, I, I knew that that property was nearing the peak value that it was probably ever going to have. And honestly, we sold it in the spring of 2015. And uh, I don't, I could make the argument that that ranch hasn't been that valuable since. Anyway, uh, the value of the land anyway, hasn't been that high per acre since we sold it. It may have been, you could argue it either way. It's beside the point. We sold it for a bunch of money. It was absolutely an out of the park home run for us. Life changing event, obviously. Um, the things that concerned me were, was it could be exactly like hitting the lotto 
and that frequently ends up in horrible failure. And I didn't want that at all. But the part where I was completely unprepared, I had no idea what I was going to do with the money. Mrs. Failure said my job was to manage the money, retire, and just manage the money. And she was right, but one of the... I was toying with, do I put it in the stock market or do I do something else with it? It needs to be invested somewhere. I wanted the principal part of the investment to stay the same and for us to just live off of the returns indefinitely. So I was just, I wanted to be out of debt and debt free so bad right then after listening to Dave Ramsey for a year or so. That's all I could think about. And I literally was going to pay the capital gains and pay everything off and take the money left over and try to move forward, try to basically get the government and the IRS out of my life. You don't take that the wrong way. I wasn't behind on my taxes or anything. But, you know, in those years when I was farming right before we sold the ranch, our annual income tax bill was approaching six figures and that was very painful. But a lot of it was the self-employment tax, right? It was being self-employed. You're paying both sides of that. And, um, you know, the, the effective tax rate we had on our income was unreal. It was way up at over 40%. It was crazy. I felt like everything I did was for the government. And they were just making way more money than I was, quite frankly. So that was part of the deal. I was on this hamster wheel of debt and taxes, and I was just over it. So we sold. I should have fly sprayed or something. Anyway, um, this is where two of my friends stepped up. Paying that capital gains... That was going to be like a seven-figure tax bill all by itself, but I was willing to pay it. And so first, my friend Mike, I called him, and I actually hadn't even talked to him in a number of years, but we were friends from way, way back. And I said, what would you do here? And he said, oh, no, no, you have to do a 1031 exchange. Got to do a 1031 exchange keep that money working for you is one of the memorable things he said. He actually said, if you send, just to pick a figure here, if you send the government a million dollars in tax money, that will be gone by breakfast the next day. The way the government goes through money, it'll be gone. It won't even be a blip on their radar. It won't move their needle, but it does move the needle for you. He said, you earned that money. You worked very, very hard for that money. Keep that money working for you and use that extra income to pay your debt down. You'll be way better off. So it didn't take me very long to realize he was right. And then another friend of mine, Todd, he stepped up and he was a, a relatively new friend of mine at the time. He stepped up and he said, hey, you got to do a 1031 exchange here. You, you can't pay that tax bill. And I said, well, this is what I've been hearing, right? And he says, no, you got to do 1031 exchange. And he says the way the 1031 exchange works, you're not going to be debt free. You're going to have, if you do it perfectly, you're going to have the exact same amount of debt you have now. Well, this was borderline horrifying to me, but he said, it'll be okay. You got to, you know, you got to get into real estate, uh, get into residential real estate, great returns. And my argument back to him was, I don't want to be a slumlord. And he said, no, you're, you're not even close to that. He said, you can buy nice real estate and, and it's relatively trouble free. And I said, well, I don't know anything about it. I don't know how to be a landlord. I don't know that I have time to pay attention to that. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, you need to hire a property manager. I know some people. I'll hook you up with them. And he said, they'll take all the phone calls. You just do what you do well. You keep farming. You do whatever you want to do and that you do well already. And you let the property Sorry. manager. Sorry, hiccup. 
memory filled up again. I'm working on it. Anyway, not 100% sure where I left off, but Todd told me to hire a property manager. Sorry, it's like 100 degrees out here, a little sweaty. Told me to hire a property manager. He hooked me up with one. He said, well worth the money. You won't get the calls. That's their job. They take them. They know market value. They know how to background check tenants. It's just well worth it. I had a meeting with them, talked to them. Everything they said made sense. They were nice people. Um, so we ended up, what we did, and this is part of what the kids didn't even know, we did do a 1031 exchange. We didn't do it perfectly, but we did it good enough. Like It's a hindsight 2020 thing. A couple of moves we could have done a little better, but it was good enough, believe me. Um, did a 1031 exchange, bought some residential real estate for rentals. No, we're not slumlords. Uh, fact of the matter is, this house here that we're living in that I did the video on the other day, this is, it was built in 1973. This is the oldest home that we own by like two to three decades, depending on the home. Our place in the mountains, same thing. It was also built in, I think, 74, 75. Second oldest home we live in or that we own. Mrs. Failure gets weird joy out of telling people that we live in the worst home we own. And quite honestly, she's not wrong. Um, this is just the lifestyle we were accustomed to. And so one of my biggest fears in this whole process was lifestyle creep. Like I didn't want, you know, like a lottery winner to let the lifestyle creep eat up that income stream. But with the rentals, it's passive income. So that puts us in a way better tax situation with the IRS. The income from the rentals generates roughly the same amount of income that I made while I was farming. And there's no risk, you know, at least, yes, there's risk with rental properties. There always is. What I'm saying is the risk of farming, of planting a crop uh, and hoping that it grows and hoping you can sell it when it's harvested is so much higher than counting on somebody to write you a rent check every month. So much higher. The onions I grew, for example, it cost anywhere from eight to ten thousand dollars per acre to grow onions for seed. The reason for the variation is rains and fungicide. If you got an extra rain, had to put on a couple extra fungicides, you're at ten thousand an acre instead of eight. Try growing eight acres of those and cash flowing that out of your pocket. That's what we were doing. Anyway, and that's just eight acres. You know, we were at that time, we were growing like 150 acres of row crops and that's eight acres of it. So what we were doing was so risky. Everything about what we did was so risky. But there's a saying, with big risk comes big reward. And that's exactly what happened here. We took a huge risk buying that ranch and we sold it and got a huge reward. And now the way failure can be retired is we have this steady monthly income that changes very little. There's little, you know, different maintenance every month and stuff. Things happen. You know, it's just like your own home on scale, right? Things happen. So the income changes a little bit every month, but not enough to really move the needle, honestly. One of my other concerns was and the one of the reasons we didn't tell anybody we didn't we said next to nothing to our friends some of my friends will watch us and be finding this out literally for the first time on youtube some of them know some of it some of them know bits and pieces um but we didn't want our life to change right we didn't want we didn't want to go out and find different friends or we just didn't want anything to change. We wanted our lives to stay exactly how it was. 
and we didn't want anybody trying to, you know, find a cheap place to rent because they were jammed up. We didn't want any of that. We didn't we just didn't see the need for anybody to know and it's really is very much still that way that's why i'm not given any more particulars than i'm given uh, and we do still have every friend that we had in 2015 i believe we're still friends with those people today i think i think i'm so thankful for them every day anyway um so that's how a guy came to be retired and then the reason he failed at retirement is number one, I figured out work is kind of my jam. You know, I like making money. I'm not going to lie about it. It just, it's always been a thing with me. But then again, we were still pretty close to a million dollars in debt and we had to get that paid off. And, you know, I just realized early on, you know, we could do it in baby steps by ta taking the monthly rent checks, taking out the bare minimum we need to live, paying down the debt with the rest. We were going to get there. Uh, we did get there that way for a while, but I also realized the more I worked, the more, the faster I would pay that down. And so I just, I just went out and just did all the work I could find. I didn't get a job. That's not what retirement was for me. Retirement for me was at that point was being able to to pick and choose what I did. And so that's exactly what I did. If an opportunity came along, I didn't like the looks of it. I just said no. And it wasn't like I had to get up at six o'clock every morning and head to the ranch and start working like I had been doing for a number of years. That just wasn't a thing anymore. I would just stay home, work in my office, make phone calls, pay bills, because I still had a ton of bills to pay. And, and I just, you know, invoice people for the work I did that took a lot of my time. And then it's only been, you know, in the last few years, over time, we paid off more and more of that debt, less mortgage, uh, bills coming in, less other bills coming in. And, uh, and that has freed up my time finally, but doing all that work. And, uh, we had a couple other things happen that probably moved it up several years, moved the debt-free piece up several years, but we already had it dialed. We were on the on our way to being debt-free already. Anyway, I think this video is long enough. Um, I may, I'm probably going to think of a few more things and do a short follow-up probably. I don't know when that'll be. Uh, we're spending more time in the mountains it's hot outside. The contractors are working here. I can't film while they're working. It's just way too much noise. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time on Failure Retirement. Have a good day.